Hey guys, what's up? My name is Avi and welcome back to The Codex. In this video, we're gonna learn about deployment of our Flask application online on a server. Right now, a lot of the projects that we've built on The Codex that you might have seen are all local projects on our platform. So the projects that we have on the platform, for example, things like the machine learning model or speech recognition with Python and Flask, these Flask applications are all running on your local host on a specific port. And for example, with this case, like a simple weather dashboard, submitting a zip code and getting the results works locally on my machine. But if I wanted to give this to my friend or tell my family about this, I don't have a link to show that. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can literally deploy your Flask application in one click. And the service that I'm going to be using today is going to be a platform called zeet.co. You can head over to the link zeet.co slash r slash the codex in order to access the platform and deploy your project with literally just one click. This startup was founded by a friend, Johnny, and it's been quite amazing to see their platform grow and expand. I currently run production level platforms on their platform as well. And it's honestly blown my mind at how simple it is to now deploy Flask and Django sites on Z. So first thing first, what I need you to do is if you're following along with your own local project, the first thing that I'd love for you to do is make sure you have your code on a GitHub repository. So right now I simply have my PyCharm files, again, my app.py, config.ini file, templates, and static all stored on a GitHub repository. In this case, my Flask weather dashboard. Uh, if you never used GitHub before, again, all you have to do is make an account, initialize a new repository. And then if you go through the steps, for example, if I just call this test Flask, It'll go ahead and ask you to follow the list of steps on your console in order to add your repository to GitHub. This step is crucial. One, it's always good practice for version control, but two, Z has a direct connection with GitHub and deploying your projects from GitHub directly on Z. So make sure you have your project on um, your respective GitHub account. And I'm gonna go back over to Flask Weather Dashboard. This is my code. The next step you actually need here is gonna be a requirements.txt file. So the whole idea is in one click, we choose which GitHub project we wanna deploy, Z will handle everything else for us. And what's really cool on their platform and the list of features they mentioned is that they manage not just generating the SSL certificate, but also load balancing. Uh, they have a continuous integration deployment pipeline and their pricing is very straightforward and they offer free instances for you to use. So. Why Zeet over something like AWS hosting on an EC2 instance or DigitalOcean? And the whole reason is one click deployment. Recently for a production level application, I was using an EC2 instance where I was managing the front end on one port, the back end, which is a Flask app on another port. I had to generate my own SSL certificates, run my own Nginx configuration and uh, develop my own web service gate interface with UWS GI. It was a complete pain. And then I discovered Z and my life kind of changed. So let's go ahead and deploy this Flask website. Again, this uh, Codex project, which is our Flask weather dashboard onto Z. The first step here, guys, is we need to go ahead and create requirements at TXT of all the configurations we need. In order to do so, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new virtual environment. I'm gonna call this Vonth. And if I go ahead and refresh my um, page, I see Vonth there. I'm gonna activate my virtual environment. So here I'm gonna say source von bin activate and then inside of this i'm going to go ahead and essentially install what we need so it's requests config parser and flask whatever flask app you're trying to deploy make sure you have a requirements as a txt file with those specific requirements so in this case i'm going to go ahead and say pip3 install requests um pip3 install config parser uh config config parser and then pip3 install flask and once I have my three requirements, I'm gonna go ahead and save all my requirements into a requirements a TXT file. I can do that by saying pip3 freeze, and then this double alligator sign requirements.txt. So super straightforward. And now if I refresh this folder, I'm gonna go ahead and see requirements at TXT. I can open it and there we go. The last thing I need is actually gonna be, um, I forgot this last package, it's gonna be called uh, Gunicor. And um, Gunicorn is essentially uh, a web server uh, gateway interface that allows us to essentially put a layer above Flask. And so for our project, you know, it's recommended you never deploy a Flask site in production. You have kind of like this web service gateway interface above it. 
And what this web service gateway interface allows you to do is it kind of takes care of communicating um, between your like your engine X, so your, your web gateway and your actual Fosca application by creating multiple instances. It also manages load balancing in this case of making sure that if one of your servers goes down, it'll kind of load balance, send it to a different server, make sure to load back that server up again. It's a very powerful gateway of communication between multiple instances of your Flask application and then the network request coming in. And so it's recommended that you actually deploy your Flask app on a web service um, gateway interface like Gunicorn or UWSGI. I'm gonna go ahead and use Gunicorn for this project. So the last thing I'm gonna go ahead and install is over here um, back in PyCharm. I'm gonna say pip3 install Gunicorn. There we go. And so now if I go ahead and freeze one more time in my requirements of TXT, I will now see Gunicorn is now there, which is exactly what we need. The next step is back in your app.py, make sure that you're running this on the host that is equal to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 and our port here is gonna be 5,000. This is just uh, general configurations for a backend service, in this case, um, running on 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0 port 5,000. Go ahead and save this and finally, add in the changes. So I'm gonna add in my changes for app.py and add in my changes for requirements.txt. I'm gonna commit these by saying um, project ready for deployment. And then I'm gonna push. Awesome. So now I have my project with the correct host, the port and all my requirements set up. And now if I go back over to Z, I can deploy this Flask project in one click. So I head over to z.co slash r slash the codex and then go ahead and sign up for an account. And once you've done that, go ahead and click on this button, new project. So it's gonna ask you, okay, you have one free basic project available, which is exactly what we need. And we're gonna go ahead and say GitHub. So we wanna to connect to our GitHub and get the repository that we just made. That's gonna be this Flask weather dashboard. If I refresh, my requirements is there, my app.py is there, fantastic. And so over here, I have the curryman slash Flask weather dashboard. I'm gonna continue and that is literally it. If you hit deploy now, you can deploy this Flask repository onto Zeet's server. Now it'll ask you a couple of follow-up questions just to get the proper configurations, and I definitely recommend you do this. So here it's gonna ask you what kind of project do you have? Again, I'm running Python 3.8, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. It's gonna say build command, so what do you need to install? Since we made the requirements a txt file, we're gonna install pip install r requirements.txt. And then the last thing for the run command, normally I'd say, you know, Python main.py or Python app.py would work. But again, we want to go ahead and use a WSGI server. And the WSGI server, again, helps us to communicate between the web server and the web application. So it helps us to distribute the load, make sure that multiple processes of our web app uh, are running, all of that. And so our run command is going to be a little bit different. We're going to say here, Gunicorn, uh, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and say here, um, dash W four. So that's gonna go ahead and create four worker instances that will be essentially creating, um, you know, four workers to run commands on. And then we're gonna say we're binding this to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. So again, like the domain uh, or the, the host of our uh, local host is gonna be running. And, and then colon the port. So our port was 5,000. Again, these are the configurations we set in PyCharm host 0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0, 0, port 5000. And then last but not least, we wanna go ahead and just say here, run our app and the file name is app.py. So it's gonna be app colon app. So um, if I go back to my dashboard, um, looks like those changes not get saved. So let me actually go back over here and, and save these. So again, it was Gunicorn dash W for workers dash B 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0, 0, 0, and then colon 5,000 as our port. So we're binding to the um, 0, .0, .0, 0, 0, 0, full colon 5,000 port. And then we're saying that deploy on the app file. So run app.py. So you go ahead and save this and then go to deployments in your Z dashboard and refresh. It's gonna go ahead and say a brand new build is pending. It was updated 10 seconds ago. And as soon as this is finished running, it'll be available at this domain, Curryman Flask Weather Dashboard, Z app. So again, this website is loading right now, but just to give you a quick overview of how simple Z is, as you just saw in one click, you can take the Flask project and literally deploy it for the world to see. So imagine, you know, you're creating a personal project, whether it's your own website, 
um, your own backend service or API, you can deploy this with Z in just a matter of seconds. And then I think what's really cool about Z is that it offers a wide variety of different features. You can track logs of your project and also metric usage, so CPU and memory. And Z offers different tiered pricing based on the amount of memory and CPU you're using so that it fits your needs. Um, I have been through the stress and hassle of deploying an AWS EC2 instance, and trust me when I say Z is a game changer when it comes to deploying any one of these Python web applications, or honestly, any form of web application online on a server. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this deployment finish. As you can see, it's building right now. We can track the progress, again, through this pipeline over here of commit, build, and deploy, and there's a continuous integration loop. So every single time I push the master, this new deployment will generate and my latest changes will be live on the site. So right now we can see that this site is deploying. It is now deployed. If I refresh this page, let's take a look and see what happens. It might take a couple seconds here, but again, we can check the logs and make sure that everything is working. And I'll go ahead and go to the point in the video where this loads. So the last thing I forgot to do guys is I wanted to set the port on which our server exists. And here in this case, our port is 5,000. So go ahead and set your port 5000, protocol TCP, auto HTTPS, hit save. This again, if you go to deployments, will generate a new build for us to deploy. So I'm gonna refresh the page. It is now deploying a brand new build with this updated setting. And now I'm gonna go ahead and speed up to the point where the site is now live. All right, so as you can see over here, our build got deployed. And now if I go ahead and refresh the curryman dash flash that where the dashboard at the Z location, we have our localhost application now available for the world to see. And guess what? Z offers automatic SSL certificates. So now I have HTTPS right there and there. If I wanted a custom domain on this application, I literally just have to specify my custom domain here and add in one CNAME record in Cloudflare or in GoDaddy, wherever your domain is hosted. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's say I enter in my zip code, hit submit, and there we go. Weather in San Jose is the temperature, clouds, this is what it feels like, fantastic. That is one-click deployment with z.co uh, and Flask, and you can take this process and apply it to any application, a Node app, an Express app, a Django app, and I plan to create further videos explaining what more you can do with Z, deploying a Django app in the future. But again, remember, share this with your friends, share this with families. Z is, I believe, the future of deployment, and I hope this tutorial was helpful for you in deploying your Flask site on Z and getting it up and running on your very own custom domain in the future. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope to see you in a future video on the Codex platform.